Okay, well, I've had a few people asking to have a look around the Land Rover now the engine conversion's nearly finished. So, uh, do a little video uh, just to demonstrate what it's like now that it's all in place. As you see, it fits really nicely. It's almost like it's meant to be there, really. There's a, a bit of finishing off to do, some tidying up and things. We've got this little heat shield in here to, for the electrics are getting a little bit hot in this box, so uh, we're just experimenting with a bit of insulation there. A um, few electrical things to tidy up and uh, we put the cooling fan on at the weekend, so that's come out of the BMW, so that was the last thing to go on. Um, but we've done some driving in the hot weather without any fan at all, and it seems to be managing just fine. So uh, I can't course. wait to do a little bit of towing with it, really, and see what it can do. Also, I remember we were quite concerned to start with about the clearance at the front between the engine and the Yeah, radiator. we weren't sure what space we were going to be left with, but... Um, and which radiator to use. Yeah, exactly. We did end up using the one out of the BMW in the end because we had it. Um, a lot of people use the TD5 ones, which... I mean, if we were taking out a TD5, we'd probably have kept the TD5 radiator, but uh, the, the two and a half nastrally aspirated didn't have a intercooler or anything, so we had to use some parts on the BMW. Um, I mean, there are other options like the Alley Sport intercoolers and things, but they're obviously quite a bit of money. Um, but they could, of course, go on later if we decide to, to upgrade. So uh, You sorted out the fan this weekend, didn't you, and how, yeah, that's, yeah. how that's controlled? The, the fan is uh, it's an ecu control fan um, for, because it's the BMW one, so it has a permanent power supply, and... Um, and then it's got a, a, a sort of a data feed to it that controls the speed. Um, we're having a little bit of an issue with that because there's no aircon fitted to the vehicle anymore. And the ECU, it, because it can't detect an aircon pressure, by default it's um, running at half speed as a sort of failsafe for the, uh, for the aircon. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to route the, the fan data feed through one of these thermostatic switches. Um, so. Uh, in normal running, the, the fan doesn't get any data and it doesn't run. Um, when the switch, the thermostatic switch kicks in, the ECU will be sending its normal, can't see the aircon data, run at half speed. Um, so we'll get a half speed fan. And if the engine continues to get hotter, the ECU will start to apply more and more fan speed. Um, so that's the theory, but we will we will try that out shortly. Um, yeah, the electrics are all in the big, the big box. Um, not totally convinced it's, it's quite a big unsightly box but um, it, it was you know to avoid having to extend the wiring loom um, inside to keep it all sort of standard but um, I don't know it ended up being we've well, got the ECU in there the EWS mobiliser module I've got some extra circuitry because I'm experimenting with cruise control which I've, I've sort of got working that needs a bit more work um, and uh, the fuel pump relays and all these bits you end up needing a really big box um, and we've got some cooling in there. The fan, the, the BMW um, box had a little fan in there to, to change the air. Um, so we kept that in our own box that we've installed. So, so that works quite well. But um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's we do a little bit of RTV work and things like that, but not serious off-road. So I'm not too worried about water. It is a waterproof box, but obviously it's got some openings for ventilation. Um, so it's only really designed to be splash-proof. Um, we've got to do some work on the air intake. Um, because the air intake is uh, obviously open at the moment. The filter, the BMW filter is in here, which again, it's quite nice to keep because it looks really smart. Again, this isn't a waterproof box, it's only splash proof, but for what we're using it for, it'd be fine. But I am still a bit worried about sort of splashes going straight up in there, so we might have to tidy that somewhere. Um, the throttle linkage, it's unfortunate I didn't, didn't take many videos or pictures of that. I'll have a look through, see if there's a picture I can add in at some point. But um, the, the throttle is in this, this grey box here. There's the potentiometer that came out of the BMW um, and it's operated by the standard Land Rover pedal on the cable. Um, we thought that was a, a nice way of doing it. Some people do mount the potentiometer down on the, on the pedal inside, but um, we fancy doing it this way. Um, so that's all the sort of basics really. Um, we'll start it up and have a little listen and then uh, we'll go for a little drive I think. I can't get it, get it up high enough, so um, there is the option of putting a 
great pipe on the centre pipes. I know a lot of people do other TD5s, but uh, I'm not into all the noise. I'd rather be the quiet and comfortable drive, but uh, I don't know what difference that will make. But we have obviously still got the back box under the wings, the little back box. But, um, so I don't know, I'll give it a little lift and see what it sounds like at the back. just right. So we, we did go for the 1.1 to 1 ratio transfer box in the end. A lot of people confuse that with the 1.0 to 1, um, which is obviously taller. Um, this is 1.1 and it's uh, Ashcroft's special gear set. It's sort of a custom ratio. It's not a standard Land Rover ratio. Traffic zooming past you, but it, you can just keep up with it. 